could not find them. I was able to turn the case over. They were not in there. So all along, I've had a little bit of slop from that. And just, you know, to do this right, I wanted to get the uh, the clips in there. Now, I have not had a synchronized second gear. So if we work ourselves kind of all the way down here, we get down kind of into our synchros for the upper gears, and then I get into uh, <clears throat> third gear, second gear, first gear. Now, what ends up happening here is this is the new setup that I'm about to put in. I have installed to my original uh, second gear. Uh, this is the original synchro ring that I had, and it is as smooth as smooth can be here. I know you can probably maybe see some ridges, but that is just, I, I cannot feel any ridges at all in here. And of course, while I can drop this in and get some um, traction going this way back into first, I do know that at the very least this synchro ring that I'm looking at putting into the assembly is new and we'll see what I'm going to get out of that but uh, in any event um, got everything broken down we'll see how fast we can put it back together here obviously my input shaft and my roller bearings and the retaining washer and clip uh, getting on down here into my uh, kind of my cutter rings and sliding clutch uh, and the clutch drive gear uh, get to the outer ring uh, then of course I mentioned third gear the retaining clips that I'm going to need to get this back together and so on down the line this is the output shaft that's all going to be going on. This is actually a, a uh, specially milled output shaft that comes from Advanced Adapter <clears throat> related to the project of taking an MP435, mating it to their Dana adapter, then mating that to their uh, Land Rover series transfer case adapter, and then of course there's the series Land Rover transfer case that we all know. So anyways, let me dig in. Um, three minutes of boring intro. See if I can't get this puppy put back together. And uh, who knows, maybe I'll... Have an improvement? <laughs> Maybe I'll have, I'll have nothing at all. But uh, anyways, I just figured we'd do this to goof around on the weekend. Okay, so then I've got uh, first, second, and third gear in place with the second gear um, synchro brake in place. You can see I get free spinning of the gears apart from first gear. Bring it up in play, and now I'm locked to my shaft, which is great. So. We'll get going right now on the uh, next steps in the process, and I've got some uh, synchro spacers here that I had not used, and I'm going to work on my tolerances and see what I need to do for that as well. We'll check back in a moment. All right, well, I'm pleased with this. Obviously, I've got reverse engaged right now. We can fix that and bring it out. Together. Yeah, so we are getting closer. Just got to get my uh, input shaft to seat on here. Give me a little bit of a pain in the butt, but you might know how much work that is. And that is now done. And I just got to get my retaining clip on there, and my output shaft is in place. Super duper. Yeah, I got my uh, rollers in and my washer and my C-clip. So this input shaft is ready to go in and start talking to the rest of the assembly. Let's get it in there nice and carefully so I don't lose anything. But in any event, I'll do that with two hands. But yeah, we're getting a little closer here. Okay, so a moment ago I showed you all that I was trying to get the input shaft in place. Uh, obviously I've gone a little farther than that since I got the video going. But input shafts in, gaskets are in to maintain my 0.007 or 0.017. Look it up if I'm off by a decimal, I apologize. But I've got my proper play on the front end. And oh, there's some glare, but see I'm in neutral right now. Let's get it up into gear. And you can see now I'm in a fast spinning input shaft with a kind of a low yield output, much, much slower is what's coming on. Because, you know, those of you who don't know how transmissions work, uh, there's more of the one-to-one -one ratio. What's different about my MP435 right here is that I've got this mounted bracket on the outside, which this is the high range, low range um, lever. And so I'm so close on the tolerances for how this all fits together that what I did is I actually came up with a way to mount this 
directly to the inspection bolts. Makes a little bit of pain in the ass, obviously, but this is now very solid, welded, and I actually can take this off with one bolt and get it out of here. I just went ahead and brought the whole thing out. Uh, this is what uh, attaches to the front of the um, transfer case, you know, front leaf of the front drive shaft going to four-wheel drive. So I'll just go reattach that with the bolt when I'm done. But this is uh, about to be assembled back together with the whole assembly here. Okay, so a little bit more on that bracket that I just mentioned. What's going on in my situation is, is if you look at just how crazy tight everything is in here, I just came up with a way to get my high range, low range actuator to play in this mix. And so if I put this above the whole setup, I get my bolt back in place where it's supposed to be there. This actually works really, really nice. So um, anyway, that's one of the kind of tolerance, proximity kind of everything fits together elements of this restoration modification that we're doing that has to be thought about so anyways that's what we came up with worked well I'll take a picture in a second here of it all back together all right so there now you see the whole thing in place now I light here in shadow but my high range low range lever uh, and just how much we had to get creative making that work. And I've been driving this for two years with no problems. Um, and uh, you can see it's just, there's just, just, that's how tight everything was. So, <clears throat> now, it looks like it's time to take this whole beautiful assembly and get her back in where she's supposed to be. <clears throat> And that is into this nice giant gaping hole, of course. So, um, yeah, I'll check back in you with, what, with you once that's done. It uh, gives you a sense now, if anybody you thought I just put in a flat bar for the transmissions uh, cross member, obviously I put a 45 in there, so that's actually quite strong. And then uh, you can see where I'm going to be resting that. So, anyways, wish me luck. Check in with you on the next little cut here. Hopefully getting this all back in nice and clean. Okay, so we're getting ready to kind of drop everything in and kind of work its way in or work its way in. And um, anyway, <clears throat> this far along and here we go. Okay, so far so good. About 60 seconds after the last video. We'll just uh, finagle this carefully back into where I can get it into the clutch and um, seat it on in. Everything's in neutral. Let's I realized is that I need to drain the transfer case anyway because I've got all the new fluid. And if you recall, part of what got me into doing this project anyway was that the rubber drive was whining. I thought, you know, let's pull it off the back. That's going to give me just the ease, complete ease, just to be able to pull this back, slide it right in, get the transmission mounted, get everything nice and done, get everything seated into the bell housing without doing any damage and uh, any swearing. Because <laughs> uh, it's going perfectly right now. But I just thought, you know, that this extra uh, this extra amount of room that I need right here was going to give me all of a sudden that much room when I get that out of the way. So let me take that apart. We'll take a look and see if there's any uh, weird wear on the um, gears uh, going on and uh, drain the fluid out of the transfer case, put the new... Uh, I am already very, very pleased that I did that because that's just going to go, you know, that's just going to seat so much more nicely up in there and make my life real easy. That just dropped in super simple. Um, get my... Uh, bushings back on the mount there but this provides us the opportunity to answer a question about whether I had a damaged or problematic rover drive um, I'm doing this with my iPad so it does require two hands sorry for this but um, here we go I would say that I'm quite pleased to, this, to learn that there's no crazy wear happening on this part of the equation came right out real nice and easy so uh, let me go seat that transmission in where it's supposed to be and I think we're probably about 30 minutes away from having this backward okay well I wish it had been 30 minutes like I just said but uh, it has actually been oh geez I would say maybe an hour and a half um, 
I brought this thing in and out a couple of times just to, you know, keep myself level-headed and do it nice and slow. And as you can tell, I'm in that rewarding phase. Of it is finally seating. I've got three bolts in and I'm just slowly working it in. The clutch is working nice and smooth. And um, I, I know that the um, input shaft seated nicely. That was the thing that I just really wanted to feel. One man job is a little bit of a pain in the ass, but um, anyway. Uh, the thing that about this that I guess I should mention as well is that if you go to this uh, NP435 setup, my filler screw down in here is really not accessible. So the way that I fill my transmission is I actually remove one of these bolts with a funnel. I fill my transmission with the appropriate uh, amount of <coughs> transmission oil. Um, now, of course, uh, it would be nice to be able to put a dipstick in like the kit on the uh, uh, rubber driver, the Global Rummer had, so I might find out if I can get the same threading in there, and maybe maybe I will go ahead and put in a dipstick as well, which would, of course, be the critical aspect of being able to check my fluid. But anyway, um, not that it's impossible to access, but it sure is that ain't easy, and backing the bolt out is... Uh, a little bit involved but you know right right down in here see if I can get the this uh, right at the tip of my finger right here is the filler bolt and it's just you know it's just not the easiest thing in the world to get to but um, also probably impossible to see in that shadow okay well um, it's officially been I've been called in for dinner but this is how far we got today and um, it's unfortunate, right? Because I know I could have this probably button back up and actually driving in a couple of hours. But um, we're not going to do that. Uh, nicely seated up here, as mentioned, the river drive. I'm so pleased because the river drive actually just seated right on. I mean, just pushed it with my fingers and it just went right on, nice and clean. Um, obviously, I got some bolts to, to tighten up down here and whatnot. But um, all in all. Um, we're back together, and uh, hopefully, uh, as you might have mentioned, as you might recall, the reason I took the transmission out was uh, just to see if I could get a synchromeshed uh, second gear back into this MP435. Uh, without those two little springs that I've been told you don't need, uh, we'll find out if I do or not, but um, we'll know soon enough. This, of course, gave me an opportunity to finally get up in here, and it's so much easier to work in this area and tidy things up with the seat out. Obviously, what I'll do, and, and take extra time, is, is, as you might recall, I have an issue with the parking brake um, lever and this cross member that cuts across here wants to conflict with this so actually what I'm probably going to do is as soon as I get everything reattached to the parking brake assembly to the frame and everything kind of make sure everything's nice and tight I'll have to rag here just to make sure I tighten down the uh, the bolts that are uh, down to my transmission uh, cross member get that all nice and tidied up uh, then I will work on that transfer uh, cross member for the parking brake and then actually this was kind of cool at the series Land Rover group on Facebook um, I finally found a seat base frame for the passenger side I have just been sitting the uh, seat base uh, just on it which you know once your seat belt in your butt keeps you down but this will be nice adjustable I'll get that um, printed up and painted nice and clean like the other side clearly a little bit of work ahead of me uh, electrical wise I probably will just wrap up this video with uh, us driving it uh, rather than walk through all the connections on the wiring because that's just so unique to this truck. But um, I do have a battery in the back and I do have actually AC power in the back as well uh, and an er inverter in the front. So, um, yeah. yeah. Anyway, that's where we're at. Not a bad little Saturday. Unfortunately, not going to finish it today. We're ready to bring the seat box in. And what we've got now, is, of course, the rear drive shaft is attached. I've got the parking brake actuation reattached where it mounts to the frame. And the front drive shaft is attached as well. Here's all that actuation we talked about a little earlier about how that mounts up nicely and you can see just how tight that is. Four wheel drive plunger and the rubber drive. Now, this is where I'm at with regards to this not being attached because it can't be. The brake lever arm attaches on that side and can't make the span. And I can't just raise everything up because then it won't fit through the hole. So, what I've done is I've marked here in here with some electrical tape and I've scarred what will be the top what will happen is we're gonna chop out the center put in a couple of vertical ears right here and then replace the center bar 
so that when this wants to turn, it'll still be all nice and attached. Take that down to the shop and get that done. All right, well, we got all the electrical back in. I've got my inverter power back again, and I just did a quick little tap. I know I've got starter, I know I've got fan, I know I've got fuel pump. Um, anyways, this is uh, a lot of wiring going on when you've got a winch, dual battery, solenoid system, and uh, <laughs> but it's uh, pretty proud of roughly how tidy it is. And um, yeah, so anyway, I'm gonna fill the fluids. Uh, again, I'm gonna back out a bolt because this is how I fill from the top. So we'll back out a bolt on the transmission, get it filled up with about uh, five quarts, maybe about three liters inside the uh, transfer case itself. And I believe it's half inside of the uh, rubber drive itself. But we'll uh, give that a go next and get this uh, puppy going. Well, it's a little bit awkward to drive like this, and with the extra four inches or so of backrest room, uh, it's like driving in a, in a Cadillac, because I'm so much further away, it's kind of crazy. But uh, anyway, got to go around and do a test drive. I'm happy to say I actually have a second gear, which means I can do something I haven't done since 2012 when I first built this, which is start in first gear and shift into second, or downshift into third coming to an intersection. So the rebuild was well worth it. And... Um, the rubber drive is all back in and, and working great. I uh, just have the wine, but I've, I've been told um, by Ray at Global Roamer, let it break in for 5,000 miles. I do know there's no damage. So anyway, um, it's all buttoned back up and ready to go. seat frame in. Um, I'll have to find some recessed screw heads for the front four placements so because the track actually uh, hits on it. But it's in, it's safe. That's finally all mounted nice and good. 